Behold, the atheist's nightmare. This is called the crocodile. Provide proof and evidence that proves atheism is accurate and correct. Were you there? Well, somebody's got to stand up to experts. Tide goes in, tide goes out. Never a miscommunication. You can't explain that. Welcome to the fourth episode of Christian Glitches, the show where I introduce you to people whose brains don't work quite right. Actually, most of the time, some of these idiots' thinking process simply does not work at all. A glitch happens somewhere in their brains, and they end up saying or doing the stupidest things imaginable. Today, we're starting with an old acquaintance of mine, Brian Fisher. By the way, I'd like to take a moment to thank Coctopus Prime for reminding me earlier this week of a very unpleasant moment in my life. You see, he brought up the fact that Brian's last name, Fisher, is pronounced the same way as a fisher, a very painful tear in the lining of the anus. Thank you, Coctopus Prime. From now on, Brian's face will always bring me back memories of painful, itchy, bloody messes. As if Brian wasn't already a source of unpleasantness. But contrary to his usual customs, today this fundy brings laughter in our poor wretched lives, for he has recently placed his foot in his mouth. Please listen carefully and see if you catch or miss the moment of lower extremity gobbling. Uh, he's got an activist attorney general. Harry Colder said, look, I'm an activist attorney general. I make no bones about that. Uh, I'm proud to be identified as an activist attorney general. I am not going to prosecute a single case where a white person is the victim. Disgusting. If a white person is the victim, I don't care if they get justice. I, I, that's no concern of mine. Uh, the only cases I'm going to prosecute are where blacks are uh, the victims. That makes him a racist. Yeah. Because he's deciding justice on the basis of skin color. Martin Luther King lost his life. He did? Campaigning against that kind of racist uh, attitude. You know, he's been able to stonewall investigations on Benghazi. So I got to ask myself the question, how in the world, what are these people thinking of? How has he been stifled in any way, shape or form? Now, clips five and six, the subject of impeachment has come up. And again, the Democrats have been talking about this far more than the Republicans, about four or five to one times as many mentions of impeachment coming from liberals than from Republicans. I've got a soundbite from Steve King. Finally, we got a Republican got the courage to actually step up and talk about the possibility of impeachment. Amazing. But Juan Williams now is insisting that all of this is racist, that the motivation on the part of Republicans has nothing to do with principle, it has nothing to do with the rule of law, it has nothing to do with the Constitution, it's all about race. He did? And this disappoints me. I thought Juan Williams was better uh, than this. It's just disappointing to me to see him slide into the gutter of playing the race card because that's the card you play when you're out of ammunition, when you don't have an argument. Yeah. When the truth is not on your side, when the facts are not on your side, when logic is not on your side, when the Constitution is not on your side, when the law is not on your side, that's when you start accusing people, calling people names. Very disappointing to me to see Juan Williams stoop to this level. Amen. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you did hear Brian first call someone a racist, then when it suited him, he said that calling someone a racist is only done when you are out of arguments, when the truth is not on your side. But enough of cerebral matters. Time for some bathroom humor. Hey, what up, everybody? Isaac Underhill here. What up? Um, I'm just making this video. It's going to be about masturbation and about sexual immorality. For real? And about demons associated with that. Um, so for a quick background for you guys who don't know, um, I grew up like in the church and I mean like in a Christian family, you know, going to church, everything like that. You don't say. But, um, since about the age of eight, um, somehow it was a demon probably taught me how to masturbate. It did. I'd never seen it. Never. I, j it's like, I just knew how to do it. You did. And it was from a demon, um, you know, instructing me of how to do it. And uh, then I would start to masturbate probably like 
twice a night, three times a night. Wow! Um, from about that age on. And, uh, what, oh, and then I would, like, fantasize about stuff in my head before I even watched pornography or anything like that. I would just fantasize about it in my head. And I thought that it was just me imagining things, but I was actually having sex with, um, demonic beings. Who were? Or, like, spiritually, you know, when I thought I was having fantasies and stuff, it was demonic beings. So, like, I could basically, like, travel to a realm in my mind. Uh, where stuff, sexual things would happen, um, and it's like, it's, it was like its own realm, and I just thought it was my own imagination, but, like, looking back, it's like, it, it was all the stuff that went, it was a real realm that I was going to, and I was- It was? Getting, um, demonic, um, pleasure, and, and they were doing stuff, it's like, it's not even like I was making it up in my head, it's like I could go to this place in my head where just sexual stuff would happen, um, and uh, then anyways, around age of 10, I think 10 or 11, I like saw some pornography on the internet. And the rest is history. Bedroom, bathroom, it all ends in room. Sorry about the confusion, folks. But anyway, it's always funny, isn't it, to listen to a fundy talk about masturbation and how it was taught to him by some demon. But... Thinking about it, I'm not too sure if I find it all that funny. Because isn't it sad that religion messed up and ruined his life like that? We will finish today's episode with another young man. This one has decided that he's found the only scientific proof of God's existence. Please pay very close attention to what he has to say, because he does get very technical at some point. God made trees and it is not a coincidence. Nope. All right. You can, you can, uh, you, this is the only, uh, this is the only proof of God. Trees. It is? How come trees take in CO2 and release O2 while we take in O2 and release CO2? Is this all a coincidence? Nope. Well, you, if you're an atheist, you can believe in it. it's an atheist. Uh, you can believe it's uh, a coincidence, but it's just too hard for me to believe that this is all a coincidence. Of course. All uh, trees and us just can't be a coincidence. This is the only proof of God. It is? On this note, I'd like to conclude today's episode feeling like I have enriched my viewers' lives by bringing to their attention these three great funny minds. Very little compares to the feeling of satisfaction I get from a job well done. Now, stay tuned to this channel and be ready for more Christian glitches. This has been a test of the glitching fundamentalist system. Federal, provincial, and local authorities have developed this system to keep you informed in the event of a fundamental breakdown. If this had been a full-on mental collapse, the attention signal you just heard would have been followed by official information, news, or maybe the rapture, though probably not. This concludes this test of the glitching fundamentalist system.